If you'll indulge me first, I just want to take this opportunity to wish you guys all a very Merry Christmas. I hope everything is happy and healthy, and I, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season with your families. This will be the last upload before Christmas Day, as I upload every Friday morning, and Christmas is next Wednesday. I hope this finds you well, and I wish you all the very, very best in the year 2020. Hey guys, welcome to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you about the best tips and tools to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and I do my best to teach you some of the insider tricks to having a successful Rust server. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel so that you stay up to date on everything that we're doing. If you feel like you got value from this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up for me. It helps me out a lot. As I'm sure most of you already know, every comment that gets left on every single one of my videos throughout this entire series, I try to respond to every single one of them. Well, one comment that keeps coming up over and over is, when am I going to do a video on server info? And for those of you that don't know what that is, it makes it so that we can display an image as soon as people log into our server that gives as much information as we want. We can do like the rules of the server. We can do the different commands that are available for the server. The options for the information that we can put into this panel or GUI is endless. You can put as much information in there as you want. And the day for me to show you guys how to work with server info is finally upon us. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So what you're seeing on the screen there right now is the graphic that I'm talking about. It's an interactive GUI. So we can actually click on the different areas and we can scroll to next pages, etc., etc. Now, like I said before, we can put in whatever information we want to put in here so that we can display it for every player that comes into the server. The name of this plugin is Server Info and it's available from the UMod website. I'm going to put a link to it in the video description down below, like I always do, so that you guys can get to it without having to search for it. I already have this plugin installed on my test server. So if you want to see how that process goes, make sure you click on the YouTube card in the top right hand corner right now. It'll take you to a video that shows you how to install plugins and what to expect while you're doing so. But make sure you come back to this video so that we can finish up with server info. Okay, let's dive into the config file for this plugin so that I can show you how to make it yours and how to put the information in there that you want to display. So after we've successfully installed the plugin onto our server, it's going to automatically generate a config file and we can find that obviously in the config folder. So let's open that up and have a look. So we're gonna break this config file down into three different sections. The first section is button text. And this is the section that I'm talking about right here when I refer to button text. The next section is header text. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm referring to header text. And then the third section, of course, is the text lines. And this is what I'm referring to when I say text lines. So if we have a look at this config file, it makes it pretty simple to figure out where it is that we need to make the changes so that it actually says what we want it to say. So just for demonstration purposes, instead of having it say greeting on our top button, we're going to have it say welcome. And in the header text section, I don't want it to just repeat what it said in the button. I actually want to put the title of my server in there. So once we've done that, now we get to determine what we actually want to say on the very first page that our players are going to see. And this can be whatever you want, literally whatever you want. You can just say, hi, welcome to my server. This is the list of plugins that we have here. Or you can have your list of rules saying, you know, don't be a jerk to new players or no kill on site or whatever it is that you decide that you want to put in here to relay to your players. This is where you want to put it. It's the first thing that they're going to see as soon as they log into your server. Okay, so I've customized the text a little bit, just enough changes so that we can actually save this config file, reload the plugin, hop back into the server, and I can show you the changes that we've made. So if we jump back into our server and go down into chat, do slash info, that'll bring up the GUI that you can always bring up by typing in slash info, or every time you log onto the server, you're going to see this GUI pop up. So if you have a look in the button section, it now says welcome instead of greeting. If you look at the header section, it now says the title of my server instead of just repeating greeting. And then below that, you can see the changes that I've made. Now, uh, you might be asking, how do I add color to that? So if you have a look at my config file there, you'll see the, the syntax that I use to change colors. And you can replicate that with whatever colors you want. It is very limited. It's like red, yellow, white, green, you know, stuff like that. You can't use hex codes in there. I'm not really sure why they didn't make it so that you could use hex codes, but whatever they didn't. So those are our limitations. I'm going to skip over this image section just for now. We'll come back to it after. 
But right below the image section, you're going to see two different text line areas where we can add more lines of text. It's not described very well what these text lines are for, but if we hop back into the server, I'll show you exactly where those text lines will show up. Uh, but first, I'll make some changes in here. So I just made two really quick changes there just so that you can actually see it happening in the server. So I'm going to save this and reload the plugin and we'll hop back into the server. And just like before, we can type slash info. And that brings up our GUI again. If we click on the next page in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see it says this is page two, which is exactly what I wrote in that second area of text lines. And if we click next page again, it's going to say this is page three, which is what I wrote in the second section of text lines. So as you can see, there's plenty of room for a lot of text lines so that you can give your players as much information as possible. On line 92, you're going to see the second button, which by default is called mods. Let's change that to plugins. And then for the header image, we're going to change that to plugins used on the server. And then we can change our text lines to whatever we need them to be. And what I like to do in this section under the plugins that are used is you can give, you can either give a description of just a list of all the plugins that you're using, or you can actually include some of the commands that are required for them. Whatever you decide works best for you. So for example, okay, so I've changed the button text. I've changed the header text. I've also added a couple of the different commands that are usable in most servers, not necessarily in this test server, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna save this, reload it, and head back into the game, and I'll show you the result. So now if we click on plugins, you're gonna see the changes that I've now made. So end teleportation, blah, 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 blah. You get the point. By default, the line starting at 115 is talking about rules, but I wanna show you guys something a little bit different or cool or I don't know, I don't know what you wanna call it, but I wanna show you something different with this. Okay, so I've made a couple of changes to this section starting at line 115. So I've made this a VIP only section, which means only the people that are in the group that we've created called VIP will have access to this section. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like if you don't have that Oxide group and compare it to when you do have it. So I'm gonna save and reload this file and we'll hop back in game and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so back in game, you'll notice that now we only have the two buttons on the left hand side there before we used to have three. The third one used to say rules, but we've now changed that to VIP. But why can't I see it? Well, that's because I'm not actually in the Oxide group called VIP. So let me just change that real quick. So now I've added myself to the, group, the Oxide group VIP. We can close out of here and go slash info again. And now I can see this VIP only section. Just by simply putting an Oxide group requirement into this section and putting the appropriate players into that Oxide group, it allows us to convey different information to different groups of people on the server. But let's say that we wanted to have more than just the default three buttons that come with this plugin. Well, that's easy enough. Just for simplicity reasons, what I would suggest that you do is just grab this entire section like I have right here, and we'll just copy and paste to that. And now we can go through and make changes to now our fourth section that we've now added in there. Okay, so I've made some changes to the VIP++ section. So let's just save this file, reload it, and hop back in game and see what it looks like. So now that we're back in game, we can we can still see our original three buttons that we that we know we should be able to see there. But we know that there's now a fourth one there that is called VIP++. So let me just assign myself to that group real quick, and then I'll show you that it's going to respond exactly the way that I want it to. And of course, just like I expected, now I have access to this VIP++ section. And this area is just for our VIP gods, blah, 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 whatever message we want to put to, you know, this Oxide group of people. Or maybe we can even put in different plugins or different permissions that, that this group of people is going to have. And this is the section that we're going to use to tell them about it. Anyways, I just wanted to use this. Uh, the VIP++ section so that I can show you that you can add more buttons going down the left hand side You don't have to just stick to the three that come by default So down below all of the button text sections and all the text line sections and stuff like that are basically the Configurables for the plugin itself so we can change the colors of active buttons Inactive buttons close buttons, etc, etc. You can change the colors of all of those buttons You can change the background color from 
as you saw it on a test server, it was just black. You can change it to whatever you want. Now this section does use hex codes. So you can hop over to your favorite hex code color picker and pick whatever colors you want. On lines 159 and 160, which isn't going to line up with your default config, because remember we've now added a couple of lines in there. So these numbers aren't going to line up, but I just wanted to show you where I'm talking about. So the way this is set up by default is it's going to show that GUI every time a player logs into your server, whether they've been there before or not. We can actually make it so that this doesn't show up every time they log in by changing these two things to false. Once you've done that, the only way that person can access that GUI again is by typing slash info in game. But if you want it to show up every time they log into the server, just leave those both at true. You'll be good to go. You can take the opportunity to, you know, run server promotions or promote your discord or promote your website or whatever. If you want to get that up in front of your players as often as possible, leave those both at true. They'll see it every time they log in. Now, to be honest with you, your regulars are probably just going to skip right past it. So you're going to want to make like a drastic change if you want them to actually take notice. So by changing your background colors or changing your background images, it's going to grab their attention and make them realize that there's something new that they should pay attention to. So speaking of the images, let's go back up to the top again and we'll discuss that section that we skipped over. So by default, you can see that the background behind our main greeting page is broken up into four different quadrants. You can control those images individually. You can change them to whatever you want. Just grab a URL from wherever you can host your own images. If you want, you just, you have to put that information in there in, in URL form. And we can also control the transparency of those images. Now you don't have to use the images or you can change them to whatever you want. This plugin gives you the ability to kind of customize this to your own taste. And you'll notice that if we go into the plugin section that there is no image in the background there. Well, we can add an image in there if you like. Simply by going down to the plugin section, you can see this open and close brackets right here for image settings. What I would do is just grab one of these images right here and just copy that down into your image settings. Make sure you follow the same syntax, otherwise you're gonna break the plugin. And I'm gonna get into that but breaking the config file for this plugin is catastrophic. It is something that you absolutely do not want to do. And I'm going to show you what can happen if you do, and I'm going to show you how to prevent it. So now that we've grabbed that image information and we've added it to the plugins section that didn't have a picture on it before, I'll show you now that there is actually an image there. So if we click on plugins, now you're going to see an image generated in the top right hand corner. That's because we added those couple of lines into that image settings section. So like I said, you don't have to have images back there. If you are going to have images, I would suggest that you don't use the default ones that come with it. These are just placeholders to show you what the syntax has to look like. I would highly suggest you get creative on, you know, your favorite graphics editing program, come up with some cool ideas or some cool images that you can put on your backgrounds. So one thing that I want to bring your attention to, and I need to be incredibly clear with this. If you make a mistake on your config file and you reload it and you get an error on your console after the reload, stop, take a pause, figure out what happened. So I'm going to show you exactly what happens every time you save and reload this plugin. So we're already saved. We're just going to do O dot reload server info okay so the, it reloaded the plugin and there were no errors which is good however when we go back to our favorite text editor it's going to ask us to reload the file anyways even though it's exactly the same as it was before it's asking us to reload the file now let me show you why this is so important and why i'm putting so much emphasis on this if you make an error on your config file you save it you reload it, you get an error on your console. If you immediately hop back into your favorite editor and just without thinking, you click on, yes, I want to reload it. You're going to lose all of your information. It's going to put this file back to default, the same as it was as soon as you installed the plugin. You do not want this. People are going to spend hours working on just this plugin by itself, customizing it, putting all the information in there that they want to have in there. I know I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on this because I've made this mistake more times than I care to admit, where I've lost hours of work and had to start from scratch. It is 
devastating when it happens to you. So I'm just telling you, if you do make a mistake and it prompts you to reload the file, all you have to do is click no. If you click no, it will leave this file the way it was before. It won't automatically generate the default file for you and you're good to go. You can go look for your mistake. And if you do make a mistake, it's going to tell you where your mistake is. So let's just intentionally put an error in there so that it's going to actually error out. And I'll show you exactly what you'll see. Let's just take out this comma right here. That's enough of an error. That's all it takes. This is why I'm always emphasizing so much on syntax and making sure that it's correct. So let's save this with that error and we're going to reload the plugin. So as you can see there, the console immediately spit out an error and it's telling you exactly what the error is and where to find it on your config file. So in this case, it's actually telling us that it's missing this comma right here on line 98, position 14. So we can go back to our editor and this is what I'm talking about. So if I'd have clicked on yes right now, it would have deleted all of my work so far and just given me back the default config file. So if we click on no, we can go back to line 98 and position 14 and look, there it is. I mean, obviously we knew where the comma was missing because we just did it. But when you're in a flurry of making changes, you can very easily miss something that is important and it's going to break your plugin. So pay attention to that. It's incredibly, I don't want you guys to get screwed over and waste a whole bunch of time on something when it's just, it's just a tiny little detail. Click no instead of yes, and you will retain your config file. I hope I got my point across. I hope I can save somebody some energy just with that. All right, hopefully that gives you a basic understanding of how the plugin called server info is working and how you can make it work for your server. It's very customizable. You can make it look and feel however you think is gonna work best for your server. And the information is totally up to you, what you use, what you don't use. It's your world, you're in control, do with it what you want. I just finally wanted to be able to give you guys the, the basic rundown of how the plugin works so that you have a basic understanding of what to expect when you start playing around with server info. Okay, I'm gonna say that's enough jibber jabber from me. I think you guys have a pretty good idea of how server info works. If you guys have any questions at all, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. Like I said, I will do my very best to answer every single one of them. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you join the Discord. If you join the Discord, there's always somebody there that's willing to help out, even though it might not necessarily be me, but sometimes it is. There's always somebody willing to help out. I'll put a link to the Discord in the video description down below. I hope you guys are enjoying the Christmas event that Face Punch just released. It's super fun. Everyone loves seeing Santa Claus driving around, dropping presents all over our world. I know I look forward to it every year. It's pretty fun. Okay, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys on the next one. I want you guys to have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys in a couple of days following Christmas Day. If you have time or you want to catch more videos, make sure you click on some of the videos on the right-hand side of your screen right now. The bottom right will take you to the playlist where you can search the entire playlist that we've got going on so far. Okay, that's it. I'm going to stop talking. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the next video.